same way. So sometime uh, the, I don't know, the rector was in a nice party or I don't know, in a golf course or whatever. And then some uh, consultant approached him and say, you know, uh, you need to build a data warehouse for the university. And then the rector, prob of course, he was not a computer scientist. Probably he was an archaeologist at, at that time. Uh, and uh, so basically this consultant was uh, efficient enough to uh, sell the idea that uh, the university should invest, I don't know how many millions in this consultancy company to build the data warehouse. But at the end, uh, the end point is my colleague uh, from the uh, computer science department, administrative uh, computer science department, uh, department end up uh, saying uh, from, a, from a call, from a telephone call from the director, we need to build a data warehouse uh, to be ready in, I don't know, three months. And then that point. Uh, of, of course, not a full data warehouse, but I mean, uh, already a, a starting point. So now we suppose that you were in the, in the other side of the phone and then suddenly you are with the uh, obligation to take into account the building of the data warehouse of the university. University is just an example. Imagine your favorite company, the company in which some of you worked before. The idea is the same. Out of this very vague requirement, how to build a data warehouse from the university, and you are a computer scientist as myself, what can we do? How do we start? Yes, but this is by the book, and as you, as you imagine in real life, nothing happens by the book. So yes, indeed, we have, but at the end, uh, you are alone in your desk, and then uh, you say, yes, I need to do requirements, but are you, who is doing this requirement? I will start with analyzing the organizational hierarchy to try to understand how it affects the data warehouse. So the Good point. At least we need to understand which is the organization hierarchy, which are for whom for whom we are building this data warehouse for the rector, because at the end he will never use the the, the data warehouse himself. More the, some people in his staff uh, will be doing that. But what we gain with this organizational structure of the ULB? After that, we also need to ask him. Expectation, that word expectation. No, but yeah, let me, then I will, the second very important point, but why, why it is important to get the, the organizational structure of the ULB? Because usually data can be collected from different, I mean, uh, it was kind of a, uh, in the same situation, we came to one organization and they said like, we need to create some model. And we are like, okay, great, where is your data? And they said, Oh, every organization has its data, and when we started to talk to them, some of them were storing data in Excel files. Some of them were just storing in, in the notebooks, like in those uh, hard copies. And it was like, they had no uh, data, there wasn't any um, structured data ready to use. So, like, they hired, kind of hired uh, machine learning specialists while the, there wasn't any data that we can uh, is this a uh, very ex strange situation? No, many many companies are like this. The the CEO of that company was contacted by probably this ma machine learning consultant, and then he said, "Yes, we need to start a machine learning uh, project." And then, but they don't have even the data to 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 build this the data project. But I I, I want to have a, I want to have from you a very Inside, why do we need to know the organizational structure of ULB? I don't know. Uh, I don't even know myself in very detail, but I know a little, a few levels of the organization. Why, as a data, as a data scientist, uh, trying to build a data warehouse, I need to know the organizational structure of the ULB? Because we'll be engaging with everyone. So we need to know for which problem we need to go to which person and who will take this area of your knowledge. So having all that knowledge will be easier in your life as requirement basis. 
yes, but the, the, the answer I was waiting, who is, we, who is using the data warehouse? I mean, we need to know the sector because we need to arrange the other like, servers and everything. So we need to know like uh, how big will be the database and you already two steps ahead. We are not even thinking of machines. We are talking about organizations and uh, the data that this organization may have to build, uh, may or may have, this example just just uh, spoken of. Uh, and then, yes. I feel like before you even look at the organization, like you need to understand what problem is it we're trying to solve or what are we doing? Right? Because if the problem is that um, you know students aren't paying on time, that's a very different problem from we want to we want to improve our marketing, right? So without even knowing what the problem is, the organization doesn't matter because I might be looking at the whole organization, or I might be looking at a part of it, or a couple parts of it. Um, but I think to uh, what Ismail was saying, understanding the organization would help you at least map out how your information might flow between places. Um, and what information, like that's what will help you build your scope and requirements of what's going to go where, but it all is pivotal to understand what are we trying, like why are we doing this and what are we trying to accomplish. And this is the right question, but do you think that the rector knew what uh, so then? I mean, your, your salary check at the end of the month and your contract that somehow at the end will will depend on how good you answer very, this completely vague requirement from the rector. Then how, how do you save your, 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 your paycheck for the next month? So if that were the case, I would use the org structure to make a list of people that I'm going to interview and talk to to understand what are their pain points and how can I help. So the idea is that we are entering here in a domain in which you receive a completely vague uh, requirement and yes, uh, a data warehouse for the university, we, it's essential to properly manage the university or whatever other organization, but nobody has a clue how to do it and you have inherited this responsibility. Then you need indeed to look who, who will be the users of the, the potential pains that we need to solve, uh, the potential problems we need to solve, and then we need to know, uh, is this uh, data warehouse concerning the student uh, success rate, uh, or the research success rate, or the personal uh, improvement through human resource improvement management. So the first idea is who will be using this data warehouse. In the end, of course, all the levels of the organization will be using at, uh, after five years when the, the data warehouse is built, uh, will be using that. But we need to start, you remember, we dis we discussed in the first slides uh, about the top-down versus the bottom-up approach for data warehouse, the Kimball versus, uh, which is the other name of the guy, you know, the two approaches. In this case, given the vague requirement that you receive from the rector, which approach you will be used, the top-down or the uh, bottom-up approach? Bottom-up. Bottom-up. Bottom you also say that? No, uh, then uh, could you please, uh, you are the expert, give me the right answer. Uh, convince one or else to the other. I mean, we, we have smaller chunks of, of data, for example, smaller tables, smaller databases that we have all around the campus, so it's more logical to build from nothing than from something. Indeed, can we now, from in one month, have a, huge, uh, a very precise uh, knowledge of how the university works, uh, who will be the responsible, uh, the, the head of the Department of Finance, uh, of the Education, of Research, etc., and get a precise requirement for all of this in one month? No, you are saving your salary check. So start with a very small problem and say, uh, you will say, okay, the director, I have the possibility to improve this, to start with a, with a small slice of the data warehouse for a very precise department. Are we tackling the uh, research department, the education department, or human resources department, or financial department? Then the, you, are pre, you are asking precise questions to the director, and in that sense you say, ah, yes, I didn't thought about that, 
maybe what is more important, I need to improve uh, my first priority for my reign, my rectorate reign. I will, I promise that two better student uh, success rates. So then we start with a small slice of the, of the students and then what? Now we are, we are sure that we are asking to have a data warehouse for courses, uh, uh, lectures, uh, etc. But we don't have yet a full requirement. We just know that we are tackling the student uh, part of the data warehouse. Then what do, what do we do? think that you need, you need to save your end of month salary check. So you need to do something that you are not supposed to do, but you need to save your salary check. Then how do you save that? So indeed, you need to maximize the chance of having a success project in a smallest uh, time frame. Therefore, you go indeed to go to the education, the, the, the director of the education department and discuss with her. And uh, she will tell you that uh, we have a problem this year, um, the, there are too many students, and then you, 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 you have a first idea of what are the problems. Of, uh, but uh, she is not a computer scientist. She is just uh, complaining about the thing that made her life is uh, difficult. Then you, you have a lot of bunch of problems that you need to solve for her. And seeing what data exists in whatever format, whether it's a written piece of paper, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, but just see what exists. So now you have a vague requirement. The next step, indeed, is to see among all these requirements how much data I collecting for which requirements. And indeed, of course, there are some things that are not even collected. And then how can I even ask, solve the problem of uh, uh, her problem? Yeah, I don't have the, even the data for that. Then, then you, indeed you say, I need to start with a very small slice. Uh, then, uh, I don't know, uh, success rate for the first uh, bachelor year, which is a, which is a, 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 a problem in every university of the world. The first year success rate, uh, it's very complex because I know when you are a teenager, you are 17 or 18 or 19 years old, and then you start uh, studies, you don't know yourself very well. Maybe you thought that you were good at math or, or you would like math, and finally at the end you don't like math and you prefer social science or, or the, the other side, the, the inverse. So success rate of the first academic year for bachelor students is a problem for every rector in every university of the world. Suppose that you want to analyze this. So it's a very comp now you are digging into you know little by little from these very vague requirements so and you are have now a very more, more concrete problem but still not the, not get there how do you solve this uh, improving the uh, how to give to the people managing the first year bachelor year success rate the data and the tool that could help them to improve uh, this uh, pain factor. Great sketch of the problem. And call it just first year. It's like a pool. Ah, but you know, this is the idea. This is, this is by the book. Uh, at the university, you cannot even think of create whatever because you need to do an open public call. Uh, so having hiring someone, it takes two years. So you need to deliver something in three, three months, at least a proof of concept. Then, um, what part of the data that could help you understand, like what subjects are the students failing, or things like that? So what professors are giving it? How how large are the classes? Try to find some of the measures and dimensions that could help you solve that puzzle to present to another. So the idea is that I'm I as yourself, myself, and you. We are both, uh, we are all computer scientists and then happy to work with uh, non-human factors. 
I'm happy to pro waste, uh, to to spend a weekend programming in whatever language, and I'm very happy with that because I don't. I mean, it's you. It, it's predictable. I know we, if I program well, I have the end result. But now we are taking into account someone else's problem. It's not yours, nor mine. But I need to transform uh, these hey, their problems in data that I can forgive, that I provide them to solve their uh, organizational problem. So we need to talk to an expert in like the education department who will have the knowledge that okay, this information actually will help me to determine the success and then we can backtrack from that and result that okay to extract this information, what kind of data do we need which will help us like get this information. Very well. So we need to get uh, to the experts on the field, on the domain, to give uh, give me this data. Then they try to begin see with whether this data is collected. What important important information is essential to uh, increase the success rate? Because of course you have a previous year success rate. You have uh, in 15 of September uh, 2021 a batch of I don't know. Uh, uh, probably it could be uh, 15 or 20,000 or 15,000 uh, first bachelor year students arriving at ULB. And then you have past experience and then these 15 years uh, bachelor student. What do you do? What will you do? Which data is important to to make that this, this batch of 15,000 students uh, give them the best possibility so they succeed? What is the most important uh, factor that it's... Uh, Yes, but uh, what information from the past I need to somehow categorize, uh, you need to categorize what is a success, uh, 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 what are these at the beginning, what are the success uh, students and what will be the problematic students that I need to help. Maybe the, the, the high schools where they come from. This is important, Sami. Uh, I would say, uh, you're talking about the first year bachelor, oh, I, I thought, for example, if we were talking about the second year, maybe we can see uh, the past, the temperate in the first year, and see some correlation between failing some course and failing some course from the second year uh, as a direct consequence. This is perfectly right, that for the moment we need to provide the proof of concept for the, in the next three months for this little problem. The, the director will be happy eventually with this solution and then we will need to extend uh, with some solution for also tackling the second year. But uh, as you, Philip, you rightly put, we need to understand from which university, from, from which high schools they are, why it is important uh, knowing the high school. Well, if they come from some high school, Or the parents, uh, how many parents are, will be happy when you say, no, I want to be uh, an artist. No, no, my, 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 my brother or my, my daughter, you do medicine or the lawyer or some serious thing. Until now, it was, it was fancy that you played piano, but now from now on, you need to do, be, be serious. That happened in all over the world. Oh, I, I, would, I would love to switch my ability in computer science to ability to learn computer science. I mean, it's, isn't it just really great? It's like if there's a real talent that you can sing. Or yes, of course. I was artist in one in one in one of my previous life. I was an artist and I <laughs> landed in computer science by accident. But nevertheless, so I I appreciate much very much arts. But the problem is this: now we have a problem to solve. And then the idea is that, of course, some schools are better tooled or equipped uh, the students for art uh, majors and other for math majors. And of course, but you get the idea. My, I will st stop my, my discussion, open discussion here. You will always have a very vague requirement. I need a data warehouse to solve this problem. 
and you don't have any other requirement. It is yourself that you need to go much beyond uh, what is uh, uh, to in what you have been said in order to build a concrete that our house and the, translate these requirements at the high level into requirements at the every level of organization. I, I will insist uh, into this uh, organization chart uh, that we discussed at the beginning. Why it is important to have the organizational chart? Because every people in all the hierarchy, since the beginning of the rector at the top, uh, all the intermediate managers until the secretary that finally uh, equivalent of Charlotte that uh, host uh, everyone at uh, the first bachelor year, she will be needed to also involved into this uh, this process because uh, she will be also collecting some data that helps all this. So you need to provide the same requirement. Uh, we, I need a data warehouse and you need to precisely a little bit more and more and more at each level of the organization until the end and then for charlotte it says yes i need uh, that you pick you collect uh, it's probably forbidden or or there are gdpr issues but at least uh, you would suggest a charlotte to the equivalent secretary at the first bachelor to get the facebook page of the students or get the um, of the mobile phone of the students in case you you or offer the students a counselor guide uh, so all this sooner or later it should also a data warehouse will uh, modify the organization because uh, we know that the problem is uh, helping the first years uh, st st bachelor students to, to succeed success, uh, the success rate then we need to improve also our business process how do we encourage uh, first bachelor students to help, uh, to ask for help, to the, put some counselors, counselor hours, etc. So it's a complete organizational restructure following up the data that you provide in the data warehouse. And it is yourself, not only as a computer scientist, you will see, I see that now that you, after three months or six months working on the problem, you have a very precise uh, idea how things are working, how operational things can be improved into the organization. And it is yourself that you will see, you will say to the director, no, uh, you can hire uh, or you can uh, devote uh, one Friday afternoon of this secretary to only counseling uh, first uh, bachelor students. Director will not have the idea to go into this level of or operational detail. So it is yourself know that you know all the chain of data from the top level to the bottom level that you can improve the business process of the of the university to helping achieving this goal. So in 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 essence, what I was trying to do here, forget about technical issues. So technical issues are easy to solve. The more important thing is all this preparatory work that you need to do as a data science to understand the, the for which. Uh, for which purpose your data science uh, solution or application has been a data science or data warehouse, the same idea. Uh, for which problems you are trying to solve and you will be the actor in the organization for making this uh, process change. So, and this is, this is complex because you need to have a lot of human have capa uh, capabilities to make things happen in the organization. Even if you are a computer scientist, you are, the, as I mentioned before, even if you are a perfect uh, technician, you will not succeed in, you, you will not be happy in your life if you do not improve your human skills, your soft skills. So out of that, we enter into very technical terms. So we forgot all these things that is beyond the, the technical terms. Now we enter into the uh, now you have received a very precise requirements engineering uh, document and from that document you can begin uh, uh, writing your uh, writing your uh, requirement but just remember that this is the the tip of the iceberg what happened before it be, be it's what you cannot see 
and then you are responsible to make this thing happen. So now let's try to go a little bit more technical in detail. So dimensional fact, mo fact model is one possible model for uh, designing the tower house. Uh, it's a popular one. Uh, we will see maybe tomorrow, uh, in the next session, in the next week, uh, another pro model that we propose that according to ourselves, of course, I'm completely biased. It's better than this one, but so you can choose. For example, in the case of the examination, when you will receive a requirement that something like this, uh, we will do exercises and small pages of requirement. You are free to use uh, this DFM model or the other LTD model that we propose. Both are similar in expression power. So what we have seen, here we have uh, a data cube, but a data cube is still too, too, too vague. I mean, it's a conceptual tool interesting, but we now be, we need to begin to approach the implementation platform. We have, as, as you remember in this example, we have the dimensions. Here in this example, we use three. Each dimension has its hierarchies. Uh, at each intersection for each in dimension, so in each cell here, you can have one of typically 50 measures. And out of that, you need to define, begin thinking of a data warehouse schema, and meaning a relational database. Uh, so we are approaching little by little uh, relational databases. So out from this, we say, so what are the basic things that we need to, in what, what we are aiming at. So of course, uh, sooner or later, you need to go back to the uh, rector and to the, the director of the education department to show your solution of your, your first uh, proof of concept data warehouse. They need to understand this without talking about the facts, I mean, without talking about technical things, as many, as, as, as less technical as possible. So we need to communicate and document, and, and document our decision, but not at the technical level, at the information level, to discuss with the rector. And uh, this, of course, uh, it's essential for facilitating maintenance and reuse, because what? Since our da first uh, data warehouse only took into account the first bachelor year, Sami proposed after six months to work on the second year. And therefore, you need to be able to go to the, I don't know, to, to the next manager and say, look at this, we have already this uh, warehouse working for this manager. Would you like to start a project for your organization, for the financial department, for, for the research department? So you need to approach the other slices of the organization with an example of what is already exist and to show co concrete, uh, you know, dashboard that we have, you have put for the education department and see, the education department is now is performing very well with this dashboard. My role now is to extend this dashboard to the financial department. And then you need to at least, uh, again, he or she will be non-computer scientist. He will a perfect uh, uh, financial department CEO. That uh, it's not, uh, you need to explain this uh, in simple terms. Enter the relationship model or is, to, you know very, uh, some of you, most of you know the entity relationship model which is used in the first database course in all, all over the world. There, there is no notion, of what are the keywords? that uh, Basically each language has, a lang uh, has a, some terms which are, the term that you have in entity relationships are entities, relationship, attributes, and generalization. These are the four words that you can use to model whatever complexity in the world. Is this solving us any, is this uh, perfect for this defining dimensions and things? No, we need another language with these four words, dimension, exactly this, 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 these four words, measure, hierarchy, dimension. We need a language for expressing this kind of things, okay? And then we can, we can design uh, the data warehouse. And this is the objective of this uh, DFM model. We start with a fact, 
A fact is the most specific unit of data that will be used in two analysis. So what is a traditional fact? Um, if we see here, a fact is a cell here. I, st I sold this store, this product, to this customer, uh, I obtained uh, 50 euros from that. So this is a fact, okay? So this is the, tra the most traditional one. What would be a fact in our university data warehouse? But, well, oh, let, let's, let's continue this example. It's an interesting example. We need to analyze uh, success rate of bachelor's first students. What will be the, di the dimensions? Success or failure? Outcome. Let's call it outcome. Is it a measure, a hierarchy, a dimension? No, it's 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 like <laughs> from which <laughs> department? From which department? So faculties, science faculties, or uh, uh, archaeology faculty, etc. So indeed, we need to. That will be one dimension. Other dimensions. Time, evolution in year, of course, we need to compare this year or last year and the academic year. So here is the time, there is no here, but you get the idea. One dimension will be academic year, which will be different. I mean, uh, it will be time, uh, but it will be shifted in calendar with respect to calendar time. What else? Other dimensions? Previous grades. Uh, we this, these are the 15,000 students that arrived for the first time at ULB. What do you mean by oh, 15? The, their high school that they came from. High school from which they came from. Another dimension there. Uh, our previous grade, but we need to obtain this. Do we collect the previous grade at uh, the ULB when you enter? Yes. No, most probably not. Uh, you say not because yeah, you know. Uh, minor, yeah. Like our, Grade point average. We have to give you every single course. If I, I put everything into a stupid, I think, Excel spreadsheet, um, so that you guys, I thought, could compute my grades. So if you're not using that, I'm upset. No, but for BDMA, for BDMA, this is essential. We we need we have a similar data warehouse to know from which universities uh, from where we are accumulating this history since 10 years of the IT4BI program. So indeed, but for the bachelor, uh, you were mentioning something, yes? Oh, maybe get the, the final grade. Yes, indeed, probably when you register at the ULB, since we are a competition, the UB is in front, uh, the UCL is not so far. So if we ask a student uh, the uh, GPA grade and the uh, UC, UC, UV doesn't ask, and then he does not have this, uh, he or she does not have this information and cannot push the button for send your application and then he can push the button. If UV, we lost one student. Can, can I yeah. add something? Uh, once I was working in a, uh, in a department who actually received those and processed, and we did one interesting thing. Um, well, they came and we could see the average grade there, the average grade, but we volunteered a couple of students and we created something like average grade for essential uh, science uh, subjects, average grade for humanitarian subjects. Look at this interesting thing. Uh, indeed, uh, it's already great if we would have for every a high school student registered to the ULB, the GPA grade, but uh, she told us that this is not enough. It will be nice to have a GPA grade for the hard science, for the social science, for the artistic, so, uh, so already have uh, different uh, GPAs. We could, in, we could envision that, but nevertheless, uh, so other dimensions. The program, but that will be the indeed, indeed. Faculty is one engineering, but inside engineering we have uh, many different programs. The program is important, indeed. Uh, what else? Other dimensions on which we information about students where he comes from, like his residence and uh, nationality or meaning whether the country of origin of his previous student, because I don't know the in every country has different requirements or uh, focusing on different, uh, some countries are more mathematical and more proof-oriented, some are more applied. That, that's interesting, yeah. 
So again, there are different dimensions for analyzing this problem. Other dimensions. Their, where they live, like their address. That could be interesting. Just in uh, terms of like, um, you can probably look at socioeconomic. Socioeconomic so important, of course. Rich people has access to better education. And of course, the success rate in average, I'm not saying that it's always the case, but in average, uh, people from social uh, high, higher classes have better education. It's a, it's a matter of fact. So, I mean, it's, but social economic, it's one parameter to analyze. Okay? So all these dimensions. But you are not stating here what are, how, what are the facts that we are analyzing through all these dimensions. Well, at the end point, it will be these students took this course and uh, has this grade, okay, for that. And then at the end of the year, we analyze the success rate or not of these students. Okay, the idea, now we understand what is a fact, is something that we can measure and we can aggregate across all these different dimensions. How many courses were succeeded by students coming from this high school? Average GPA of the courses of the first year from the student of uh, this socioeconomic category. Okay, for that idea. Now you understand, the, I mean, it's easy to understand for sales, but the, that our house are using for much more complex things, so it's important to understand how to deal with uh, facts. So, usually correspond to one or many transactions within a company. So a transaction at the university will be one success, uh, one exam. Even if it is partial exam, even if it is, uh, I don't know, project. You will have to have a sent project for this course. Should I, should I take the overall grade of the data warehouse course or should I also take into account the first project, the second project and the final exam and the average of all this? Maybe this level of detail can also be interesting that uh, knowing that, for example, people from that uh, high school uh, succeed very well the uh, programming uh, projects, but they fail at the formal mathematics uh, proofs uh, courses. Okay, so in this, in this respect, we can already have a guidance for the mathematical course in some way or, or another. You get the idea? So, uh, what else we... And again, design choice, it is up to you. The rector will do, 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 didn't give you any, any hint. It is up to yourself to decide what, what are the factors. You know, this, this discussion that we had, uh, what will be the dimensions? You, it is yourself that you need to put into the head of uh, the, the first bachelor course and uh, ask uh, how can evaluate my, my possibility to succeed or not given all these parameters. So again, you, are, you need to take the role of the, 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 the decision maker in order to uh, really provide all the facts, uh, all the dimensions, all the hierarchies, etc. Uh, but it's a traditional, this is the traditional store, this is fact, the dimension, we already know, uh, uh, high schools. High school would be, uh, but uh, is, do we want to aggregate the high school from which a bachelor student is, is, uh, is coming from? What will be the hierarchy for this dimension, high school? Country, city, etc. What kind? There are different kinds of high school. Like uh, technical oriented high school, more formal oriented. So there are variations in the type of high school. In, even in Belgium, there are several networks of high schools. There one uh, by the commune, organized by the commune, another by the uh, Catholic community, Catholic university, there are other uh, free or uh, not uh, religious. So, so there are several networks in, in high school education in Belgium. It varies from one country to another. You need to understand from which network, whether it is private or public uni uh, high school. All these factors are the 
uh, characteristic of, the, the, of the, this dimension has high school. You need to put uh, hierarchies on that. Okay, for this this example of uh, again design choice, it's up to you. It's up to you how many details you want to collect. Uh, but remember that when you design uh, one hierarchy in your in your uh, data warehouse. You, the first thing you need to do is to understand whether this data is collected. Suppose that uh, uh, you, you don't know uh, from which, the only thing that you know, suppose that actually at the ULB, I don't know what is the case, but suppose we, we don't collect uh, the information of where the student, uh, which is the high school, they are coming from. Then what? Uh, so. According to yourself, this is a very important uh, characteristic. Then it is not collected. What, what can you do as a data scientist responsible of this new project from the launched by director? You are convinced that this, uh, this information is essential. I, I, I agree with you. What can we do? Maybe predict, predict depending on where he lives. She lives. Uh, in Belgium, there are some correlations, but uh, it will. This is, this is not a sustainable. Yeah, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable solution. You were saying something. Well, start collecting. Come on. Start collecting. This is the only way. So you need to give uh, work with the people that are building the interface, the SAP interface for the registration of the students. That see, look. Uh, I obtain it from the director the authorities. They need to first, uh, to, you need to first to talk to the director and say, I think that the, this is an essential information to collect. The director says, I fully agree with you. Please talk with the, the people at the IT level to begin collecting. Then you can go to the people in the interface and you need to ask these people to add a new field uh, in your form to say, uh, which high school are you collecting? And then, of course, the problem of if you are coming from a high school that is outside Belgium, you can have a list, a combo box with all the list of the high school registered in Belgium. But what happens if you are coming from another country? So you need to begin solving this part. The idea, what I'm, what I'm uh, referring here, is that the data warehouse will push modifications of the operational database. You understand this idea? Since you need to collect the, the high school, this high school should land into the data warehouse, but at the operational database, the registering every student is not collected. So you need to, given that, modify the schema of the operational database, so it's a cycle. You need to continue the mod one, one database or requirements in one database, modify the other database. Can one dimension be part of multiple hierarchies? Yes. I, I no sorry. In the same, is it what we are asking? From the same hierarchy, from the same dimension, you can have multiple hierarchies. Yes, like if we have school, can we have it as a part of hierarchy in a geographical sense, like country? Uh, that's an important, interesting question. How do we solve the, the, the school has a geography, the customer has a geography, the student has a geography. I'm a person who has a geography associated with all this. How do we solve this problem in the data warehouse context? You could have, sorry, you could have one table for if, if they all have the same information, and then like the IT would, would, would differentiate if it's a student or a faculty. You are already thinking in a very implementation oriented, but this is the trick. Maybe we can explain the same thing at a high level. How do we explain that? Well, country geography is always like total yeah. level. Uh, geography is more or less the standard for what if we, either you are the location of the store or the location of the high school or the where do you live. So indeed, there will be a shared dimension geography that will be shared by all the dimension. But you need to identify, you know, that the geography is very complex. Uh, if you apply the geography, the geographical distri of official distribution of a geography in one country, not the other in the other country. In Belgium, have regions. In 
Uh, this is a recent addition. Uh, in Spain, they have communities. Uh, in <coughs> Germany, there are landers. So having a unified in uh, in Canada, you know, there are provinces and United States, there are states. So and there is no region. So every country has its own geographical subdivisions. And they, these are official things uh, that are standardized. The first level administrative division, second level administrative division, they are ISO standards for all this. And then you need to base on, this, on these standards to have a, a, a something that is matches all the countries of the world as much as possible. Yeah, the idea is the same. We have a standard special partition, uh, special, uh, special partition of a territory, but the first level could be region for Belgium, or it can be states, and in sta uh, the below region in Belgium, the, there is provinces which correspond to the provinces in Canada or the United States uh, or states in the United States. So. The, the correspondence is not to one to one from one country to another, but yes, there is first administrative level, second administrative level, third. If you go, for example, to OpenStreetMap, you know OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap, they have uh, an official, uh, that of course, it, it covers over, all over the world, and they have first administrative region, uh, and they, they, have, they keep the name, uh, whether the first administrative region is landed or region or province or state. And then second, and then third, and then you need to define at, at, at which level you stop uh, for every country. Okay, so you get the idea, this is our dimensions. And then of course we have shared dimensions that are shared by us, uh, shared pieces of dimensions that are shared by multiple dimensions. Uh, dimensions, uh, the problem of data or time dimension or date dimension is, is, is it's not a problem, but there are very subtle nuances of that. First thing that we could think, uh, imagine a traditional database uh, for a data warehouse for uh, supermarket. How many date dimensions, or Amazon, imagine Amazon, how many date dimensions we could have in uh, Amazon like data warehouse? So we are analyzing sales by date, traditional, but how many dates or which, uh, uh, which kind of date are we analyzing from in an Amazon-like uh, data warehouse? Date of what? Purchase. Date of sale. Are there other, other dates? The, the time that you put your credit card. Date of shipping, date of arrival. All these. So there are different dates corresponding to different uh, steps of the business process. All of them, of course, are linked to a single time dimension in which most uh, years, weeks, uh, or all these are defined. Okay, for that we have several day dimensions, all with the same structure, but one will be order date, one will be ship date, one order, one uh, order with delivery date, uh, one will be uh, complaint date because you received uh, something that you were not asked for or you were not happy with. Uh, so we have many. Now let's talk about uh, academic years or fiscal years. Uh, how does, uh, 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 let's start with fiscal year. Does any company, uh, Amazon has also a calendar year on the January to, to December, but do they have a fiscal year? Yes. What is a, can, can someone explain uh, what is a fiscal year and why it is same or different from an, uh, a calendar year? When a business registers itself, they have to determine when they're going to be taxed. Usually, they get to kind of pick. Um, I'm guessing for Amazon, given that they work in different countries, they might have different uh, fiscal years depending on each country. But uh, what uh, what is the, the, the how do we relate fiscal year and uh, calendar year? Is the, is the same or both of them would have the same number of days? Um, one of them is going to drive when you have to do your fiscal responsibilities, like paying taxes. The other one might be more of a user 
uh, like seasonality of when's Christmas, when's Easter, that kind of stuff? I, I would try to rephrase uh, in, a, in a simpler way. You need to define when is the first the year of the calendar. And for the calendar, calendar so the first year of the, the, of the year. In the calendar time, uh, the first year will be 1st of January. What will be the first uh, day of uh, fiscal year? We don't know. We don't know. That is that means what more precisely? Did we don't know? But what what does it mean more precisely? It depends when. In, so the, the the fiscal organization that it's in every country has its own date. So you need to to pay your taxes due to that date. And yes, but uh, but to be very precise, uh, you uh, when you build your company. You need to decide uh, whether you are paying your tax, you are sending your, uh, your, the, 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 your information to the tax administration on the 1st March, on the 1st June, or in the 15th of August. This is the starting of your fiscal year. Why it's important for a company to assess uh, the starting point of the fiscal year? So that they can have a same date for keeping track of their progress. Like if they want to compare their revenues between years. So the dates has to be consistent so that they know okay, exactly after 365 days. Yeah, but why one, uh, one company would, uh, would choose uh, 1st of March as the start of the fiscal year and another, and another one uh, 1st of September? Maybe it depends on the budget, on the budget planning. If you're, if you're a public company and you have stockholders, uh, then yeah. when you release your statements impacts their uh, confidence in you. So for example, for Amazon, you're probably gonna have a really good uh, quarter after Christmas. So if you have your quarter or your fiscal year end on um, December 24th or December 23rd, um, you're gonna split up a big season. So it might be strategic for them to plan their fiscal reporting around when their sales are going to be up or down. And what happened typically? A company is never alone, especially now you all these Pandora thing, uh, Pandora papers, no, I, are, are out to the public. Typically companies are, uh, uh, there are two companies and one has a fiscal year, I, I don't know, in 1st of June, and another has a fiscal year starting on 1st of November. Why? Because both companies are the same company, but for, for fiscal re reasons, they are split into two. And then when one company has too much money, too much income, and then they need to optimize taxes, they push the, the surplus income into the other company to have six months more to get away of this excess of income to optimize the le le pay less taxes. So again, you uh, this is just an explanation why a company has different uh, starting fiscal year because it's a conglomerate of companies that all of them optimize the try to do fiscal optimization to pay less taxes. So again, going back to our dimension, you have a calendar day, a calendar day time, uh, dimension, and a fiscal day day uh, dimension. It is always uh, uh, use uh, very common products, uh, traditional things, uh, and hierarchies. Uh, basically, each dimension. Going back to this, uh, to this thing. Uh, each dimension has a lower level. At this level will be the product, uh, the store, and the customer. But uh, you need to decide in which, uh, which will be the criteria for uh, aggregating the measures at this uh, very detailed level. And this is where uh, you need to define whether there will be a single dimension Sorry, a single hierarchy or multiple hierarchies. Let's see the traditional example of products. How do you characterize the products of a company? I mean, of the supermarket or, or the Amazon, whatever website you favor most. How, how do we know the dimension, sorry, the hierarchies of these dimensions? Where you can find the, the hierarchies in Amazon? 
product category? So you know, immediately, in, even in the website of Amazon, you have the possibility where it is, uh, you look for overall or for books or for video. These are the dimensions already, that it's already visible outside because you can already filter out uh, your search for products in one of these uh, levels of the hierarchy, okay? But our, can, can we envision for a product several? hierarchies which are of course related but uh, orthogonal yes you can have like men men's t-shirts and women's t-shirts for example ah uh, yes so indeed indeed uh, could be gender gender oriented and then of course we have two instances members of this uh, level male and female for the moment, let's all forget all these LGBTQ uh, questions, <laughs> and then let's let uh, that, that's also important. But let's not uh, complexify the problem here. So we have two instances for this uh, two the dimension. Basically, so it's a dimension. Uh, what else? Uh, and then we can characterize the products by say, by gender. And then what else? Tech products, like sometimes while are gender tech. So we have uh, the same product assigned to two categories. The traditional way would be category, subcategory, or line, and etc. And you have a hierarchy for that, but you can have a parallel uh, hi a hierarchy for brand. Why, why it is parallel? Because they want to search uh, everything with the same brand, the same brand has multiple things like washing machine. Yes, imagine Samsung. Samsung produces many different things of many different categories. So it's an orthogonal with respect to the traditional uh, category that you define in your database. So this somehow relates to uh, answer your question for the same dimension, alternative ways to aggregate the, 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 uh, the members of the dimension. So look at this, and then I will take a break. We have the date hierarchy. At this level, it is date, of course. A day can be aggregated to month, to quarter, to semester, and year. And look at this. I have a parallel hierarchy from day to week, because? And no upper level. Why? They're not the same. Day of week is very important, like Saturdays. Yeah, this day. is uh, with day here. But the, the idea here is that we take all the measures for one month and then we compute the measure from the quarter. But can we go from week to quarter yeah. or week to month? Isn't we measure, like you're talking about week one, week 23, week 52. Is that what week means there? Yes. Because traditionally, we don't um, aggregate our weeks of the year into quarters, and that's, that's kind of the end point. There's nothing else to aggregate it into. Can you explain? I fully agree with you, but maybe not everyone has a, such a clear answer. Can you explain why it is the case? So, like our concept of time is that when you look at a calendar, you've got 30 or 31 days or 28 or 29 days. Uh, all of those days will fall into some month. Every quarter will always have three months, month one, two, and three. Uh, every semester, I guess, will have half a year, the other half a year, and every year has all of the 12 months. But um, the weeks, you might have more or less than exactly one twelfth of the weeks in each month. So basically, you have a, a week which is in between two months. Yeah, yeah it has like solid uh, number of days. Yes, you see, we have seven days, but sometimes it goes for two in one month and two from the next month, and sometimes it is seven or, or six or then. But well, you could have week and then year. Uh, is the week, uh, 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 are the week uh, can uh, be uh, across two years? Yes. Then we have a problem. Then, uh, but indeed, we need to aggregate that. How do we typically cope with this problem of aggregation? from week to something more aggregated. Would you just slice it on two different dimensions in that case? Yes, uh, but uh, is it possible, so uh, an approximation, the rector doesn't, no, don't need to have a very detailed, can we approximate a week to a month or? Yeah, round up or round down. Yeah. Round up, and how to do this? There is a formula, round up is a formula. So can you explain uh, sorry, in technical so terms? Uh, if um, four out of seven of the 
uh, we're talking about weeks. So if four sevenths of the week falls in one year, you put it in that year. Um, Indeed, there are very simple, it is called coercion functions to make fit one hierarchy that we can, it's not exacting to, of course it could be an approximation, but it's already a good approximation to say how much, may, how many days of the week that correspond to which month or to which year, and then we aggregate it in this way. Same way for weekdays. Uh, let's have here for customers, we have the traditional geography, but we can have also another geo, another dimension of customer with the uh, depends on the date of birth and what will be the age of category, uh, the age category, what would be the case? Uh, Millennial, boomer, Gen X. Uh, I don't know if everyone knows those terminology. Can you explain? <laughs> or in simple... Um, so, uh, I mean, history-wise, boomers came around after World War II, so it's uh, let's call it a general uh, category of people that have similar values and mindsets, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so boomers are all of the people that were born after World War II, um, and then we have millennials. Are there's a certain I guess date range in which they were born that is describing a generation of people. So you get the idea. So again, we have uh, many possible ways. A typical way is to have with respect to age. Even for example, so this category so is another one. I mean, uh, not uh, another way to categorize the category is from uh, zero to fifty. Then uh, fifty to what would be a good uh, proper for for sales perspective? Fifteen to twenty five. Why, what happened at 16, 16, 17, you are beginning having your own money. Yeah. And then at least you need to target this class of uh, has, uh, more, uh, so, uh, um, not much money, but uh, they are important for the next, for the, for the, for, uh, for the next, uh, next, um, when they will be, be grow, grown up. So it's until 16, then 25, why, why 25 and not 28? But what is the uh, essential element of a life of a person that we are targeting? Students. Yes. Get a job. Uh, and get, uh, get a job while well, graduated at university or get their first job. So this is an important fact. Next, next category. Next, next stage category. Family, and then the family, of course, that varies in country from country, but which age are we can randomly pick for starting a family life? When yes, we, please uh, do tell us which age. I don't know. I'm a very bad example for that. Please don't tell. We can tell, but I'm an outlier in this respect. Uh, but in our, what would you put? 33, 35, uh, could be, uh, yeah, these people, you have been uh, party a lot, now it's time to settle down and uh, go with the family, 35, what till? Sorry? We can start with 21 because you are responsible for yourself. So again, again, it's uh, application dependent, uh, you, I mean, the rector will not give you this, the rector will not give you this category, it is up to yourself to build. <coughs> your categories and to put it into the into the data warehouse okay you have a lot of responsibilities to improve when you are doing the data warehouse you are have a lot of responsibility beyond your computer side responsibility so you are trying to improve the business process of the university when you are building your data warehouse and this is your responsibility you need to put yourself into the shoes of directors how would director if you were director how Good uh, data will help you to do better your job. Okay, so let's uh, stop like this and have a 10 minute break. Uh